Hello everybody, this is Cold and Solder and today we'll look at a really cool project I found online, the X6 in Nixitube driver. It was designed by Deku Newcam, who has quite a few interesting projects on his GitHub, like a tripwire device that presses Alt Tab and this OLED equipped keypad, so go check him out. He also sells his stuff on Tindy and as you'll find out later in this video, buying it there would be a good idea. As everything here is pretty expensive, this video would be impossible without JLC PCB. They have also invited me to make her for Rome, more details soon. As the boards are small, ordering them from JLC was basically free unlike the rest of the components. X60 uses 11 modern high voltage bipolar transistors and a mid-range STM32 for each segment. While this simplifies the design significantly, the controller ended up costing more than the lump it's attached to. The convenience it offers offsets it for me though. With complaining out of the way, let's get to assembling. The bill of materials is pretty short. PCB, processor, transistors, a few passives. The tool list is a bit longer. Two soldering stations, tweezers, solder, flux, solder paste, stencil for the paste, something flat and flexible, more PCBs, tip cleaner, solder wick, tape. As I forgot to order the stencil to cover the whole set of boards, I had to make a simple jig to apply it individually. I am really impressed by the results, especially as the stencil cost just $6 from JLC PCB. I marked the resistor values on a spare board and got to placing the components. I skipped the LED as it was out of stock and I don't like backlight on Nixies anyway. Afterwards I just heated the whole board with hot air. A reflow oven would be preferable, but I don't have one at the moment. To attach the leads, I made a holder out of a few boards which made the process a bit easier. Finally, I inserted the lamp, careful to align the cathode with the marked hole. 12 more solder joints and the hardware is done. Now to repeat the process 5 more times. To flash the firmware, I connected the 4 pins on the knock of ST-Link to the appropriate pins as shown on GitHub. After a few seconds, the firmware was ready to go. The example code work out of the box on an Arduino Nano and the library is really intuitive. All in all I am very happy I went with this driver, as while it was a bit more expensive than a DIY solution, it took a few hours and not months as my projects always do. I would recommend buying it though as the assembly is tedious and doesn't save that much money anyway. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time while I make something cool with the modules.